Welcome to Adaxis. In this video, we'll be looking at business units. This feature enables the combining of Active Directory objects into collections based on certain criteria. In a sense, you can think of business units as virtual organizational units that allow you to collectively view and manage various objects irrespective of their AD location. Let me give you an example. Here I have a business unit that contains all the user accounts whose department is accounting, regardless of where in Active Directory they're located. They can be spread across different organizational units, domains, and forests, even if the forests don't have trust relationships between them. Pretty cool, right? Now, to see how business units work, let's create and configure a new one. To add objects to the business unit, I need to specify membership rules for it. As you can see, with membership rules, I can add specific AD objects, members of groups, objects located under specific OUs, or objects that correspond to certain criteria. The latter gives me a lot of flexibility over which objects I can add. For example, I can add all users in Active Directory whose last name is Smith to the business unit. Membership rules also allow me to exclude certain objects from the business unit. For example, I can exclude all members of the deprovisioned users group so that I won't have any terminated users in my business unit, even if their last name is Smith. And once I'm done with the membership rules, I need to specify which columns will be visible by default when viewing the business unit and how the objects will be grouped and sorted. And now I have a business unit on my hands that contains all the users across my entire Active Directory whose last name is Smith, except for those that are members of the deprovisioned users group. And now if at some point a new user named Smith is created in AD, this user will be automatically added to the business unit. And if a user called Smith changes their surname to something else or gets deprovisioned, the account will be removed from the business unit automatically. Business units can be arranged into folders. This means that I can create virtual hierarchies of AD objects and allow users to browse these hierarchies in the same way they browse regular OUs. So I can allow users to browse Active Directory based on whatever needs they have, irrespective of the AD structure. For example, if it's more convenient for users to browse Active Directory based on departments, with business units I can easily give them such an option, even if my OUs are actually arranged by user location. Business units can also be used to apply automation rules, schedule tasks, policies, security roles, and so on to their members. For example, I can delegate control over all users whose last name is Smith to the help desk staff. To do that, I just need to assign a security role to the help desk group over the business unit I just created. And what this assignment means is that all help desk staff members will have all the permissions specified in the role applied over all users whose last name is Smith. Now, if a new user named Smith is created, help desk will automatically gain control over this user. And if at some point a certain Smith changes their last name, help desk will automatically lose control over their account. Business units can also be dynamic, which means that they can contain different objects depending on who's viewing them. For example, I can have a business unit that contains all the users who are from the same office as the user who's currently logged in. So let's see how it works. Here I have a business unit called My Office. And as you can see, now it contains all users from the New York office. That's because I'm viewing it and I'm from New York. But when I'm logged in as another user who's from the London office, the same business unit now contains other users who are from London. So let's see how such a business unit is configured. As you can see in its membership rules, the office property is set to be equal to a value reference, which will be replaced with the office property value of the currently logged in user. So for whoever is viewing the business unit, it will contain all the users who have the same office property as them. This means that, for example, to let everyone browse users who are from the same office as them, I can give everyone just this single business unit instead of creating multiple instances to cover all the offices and giving them out to different users. Dynamic business units can also be used when assigning permissions over objects that are somehow related to the users I'm giving the permission to. Like for example, I might want the members of my help desk staff to manage only the users who are in the same office as them. To achieve that, all I need to do is assign the security role to the help desk group over the My Office Business Unit, which we've just seen. The way such an assignment works is that it's effectively different for different users. For example, for the help desk in London, it will be assigned over all the users in London, 
because that's what the My Office Business Unit contains for that help desk. All that's achieved with just one simple and elegant assignment, which requires me to maintain just one group and nothing more. And for example, if a new office will be opened in a new location, I won't need to change anything in such an assignment, as it'll just work. So, using business units, you can arrange AD objects the way you want, irrespective of your actual OU structure, which can simplify cross-domain management, make day-to-day -day administration more convenient, and allow users to browse AD objects the way they need. Business units also give you much more flexibility when assigning automation rules, scheduled tests, security roles, and so on, which means the assignments become simpler and you need to spend less time on their maintenance. Thanks for watching.